Hello, and thank you for watching The Righteous Kitchen, a cooking and baking blog found at www.therighteouskitchen.blogspot.com. I will be making sweet potato custard and a little bit of the prep work I've done tonight. Since I was roasting vegetables, I went ahead and put on a couple of large sweet potatoes. And the way I prep these for roasting is you just come in here and you put a few slits, um, just like you would do a baked potato. And then I rub them with a uh, cooking oil and wrap them in aluminum foil. Now these roasted at 425 for about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours until they're nice and tender. All right. And that oil helps to get the skin off of the potato. Now these are still warm and they're easy to peel. See how that comes right off? I'm just gonna peel these. Just use your knife and that'll keep you from burning your fingers. All right, so I have all the pilling, or the skin, get that all off of there. And then I'll just All right, so just put that there, get this foil out of the way. Now that the sweet potato has been baked and peeled, you're gonna wanna get it into a smooth consistency. You can run it through a, a fine mesh strainer you could blend it up in a food processor, but I'd like to use a food mill, and I happen to have an attachment that goes onto my mixer that's a food mill. So what I'm gonna do is, while it's nice and warm, I'm gonna go ahead and start this, uh, getting this pureed. Okay, if there's any left, you just um, can mash it through there. This is a 
vintage attachment that fits the KitchenAid mixer. And if you want to look for one, you'll have to uh, check Facebook Marketplace, uh, eBay, or Etsy. And this is called the colander and sieve attachment. It's basically a food mill. It's great to make baby food, purees, sauces. So let's look how nice and smooth this puree is. Look at there. Really smooth. You really, you really want these sweet potatoes to be smooth. So, um, so that's it. These are prepped for tomorrow. I'm going to need 15 ounces, so I'll go ahead and measure that out. So, and like I said, I'm going to make a custard. It's, it's nice. I really like having these uh, healthy custards available. Um, it's nice to have a quick treat, something I can grab really fast. And I don't have to worry about, you know, reaching for the junk food. Okay, there's 15 ounces there. And I'm gonna measure another one just to kind of see how much I got out of those two large sweet potatoes. There's 15 there. There's a little bit left over. I'll eat this tomorrow for lunch um, with some roasted vegetables on top of it. So that'll be yummy. Okay, so um, the prep work is all done. I've roasted and uh, pureed two large sweet potatoes. That's enough for two pies or two batches of custard. So I'll come back tomorrow and put this together. Okay, we are continuing on with this sweet potato custard. Now last night I went ahead and prepped the sweet potato puree. And I have 15 ounces of that. I'm going to keep the same recipe that I used for my pumpkin pie. And it's going to be the same exact for this uh, sweet potato. You know, we're just swapping out the pumpkin for sweet potato. And this sweet potato is, you know, has the same consistency as the canned pumpkin. It's nice and smooth because I ran it through uh, the food mill. But... I do prefer sweet potato over pumpkin. I just think it has a, a richer flavor. So I do like that. And look how nice and smooth this is. It looks just like the pumpkin. It's nice and smooth and it's ready to go. So what I do is I've reduced the amount of sugar I'm using two stevia packets. This is all natural stevia extract. The brand of stevia that I like is from Dollar General. It's Clover Valley. And then I'm using one third of a cup of brown sugar. And if you don't know about the brown sugar, let me grab some tongs real quick. To keep the brown sugar nice and fresh, I have one of these clay discs. And that's just to keep moisture in your brown sugar so it doesn't dry out and clump on you. 
They're only a few dollars. You can find them at Walmart, uh, probably Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, but any home goods store should have these clay discs. So you just pop it in your airtight container and it's gonna keep that brown sugar fresh for you. So we have a third of a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm gonna do a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice. I use allspice as a, a substitute for nutmeg. So if you have any allergies to nutmeg, allspice is a perfect substitute. And then I'm gonna put in a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. So go ahead and get this all mixed up and get those spices incorporated. Anything that you can make with pumpkin, you could replace and make it with sweet potato. So cakes, cookies, scones, pies, all of that is going to be uh, even better if you use sweet potato. All right, now we're going to put in two large eggs. Let me rinse my hands real quick, and then we'll wipe up where we cracked that egg. All right. And then I'm using one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. That's the thin milk, not the sweetened condensed milk. And also, do not use fat free milk. It gives it a wet consistency. Um, it's just not as rich as the full fat evaporated milk. I am using these cute little custard cups. I like them because they're nice and convenient. You can put the lid back on them and store them. They're compact, they don't take up a lot of room. So I'm gonna use those, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna make extra. So I should get between eight to nine uh, servings out of this. All right, fill these up to about a quarter of an inch at the top. This custard dish is set if you want to use it as a bain-marie, um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cook them straight into the oven. The oven is at... 350 degrees and I'm gonna put this in my toaster oven because uh, everything fits in there really good and it gets done a little bit faster these custards in the glass dish should take about 30 minutes the custards in the metal 
custard dishes will take about 40 minutes. Okay, so we ended up with nine custards and I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven and then I'll uh, bake them until there's no uh, jiggly custard. Everything's gonna be completely firmed up. But we wanna look for, we don't want it to start cracking You'll not when it's firm, you'll be able to move it. And if it doesn't jiggle, it's firm. But don't take it and over bake it to where it's all cracked. All right, you want a smooth top. Okay, these have been baking for 30 minutes. And you can see they're not jiggly. And they're done. They're not puffed up and crusty. They haven't cracked or anything like that. So... Those are just how you want them to be. Very pretty, really nice looking custards. This one here, I accidentally poked it with my um, oven glove. But you can eat these hot or you can chill them. Either way, they're good. But when you eat them hot, they're not as smooth. The texture changes just like on the pumpkin. They'll get smoother as they chill. But this is, even for it being hot, it's still pretty smooth. Smoother than the pumpkin. Mm. These aren't overly sweet. And they're very flavorful. They taste, to me, they taste better. They've got more flavor than pumpkin. It smells so good in here. It smells like Thanksgiving. All right. I'm going to let the others cook. It takes about 40 minutes on the others to cook. You can see how that's, that'll get smoother as it gets chilled. But um, I'm gonna let these completely chill in the refrigerator for a few hours and then I'll come back and, and we'll look at the texture change. All right, we'll be back later. Okay, I just pulled these uh, pumpkin custards out of the oven. They baked at 350 for 40 minutes and they baked until they were set up and there's no jiggle to them. And they, they'll puff up just slightly. You wanna take them out at that point. You don't wanna over bake them and where everything bubbles up and splits on you. You want a really nice layer like this where it's nice and even. So cook it just to where it sets up. So these took 40 minutes and then in the glass Pyrex, they took 30 minutes. And what I'm going to do is let these finish cooling to room temperature. Then I'll put them in the refrigerator to chill. Uh, I'll let them chill for four or five hours. And then I'll come back and we'll do a little sample. We'll let you see what it looks like um, when they're chilled. Now, it's going to be just like the pumpkin custard. When it chills, it gets smoother. So I'll come back and show you that. And I'm going to keep one of these out on the counter and we'll do a little bit of comparison. But these baked up fantastically. Okay, I am back and these pumpkin custards have been in the refrigerator for about four hours. And I did save the um, one of the pumpkin custards I didn't put in the refrigerator and I just wanted to show you the text texture. It is creamier than the uh, pumpkin custard, but as you refrigerate these, the, it gets smoother. But still, on its own, this is still smoother than the pumpkin. Alright, as it chills it gets sweeter the spices come together 
and the flavor intensifies. So, that's why I prefer them cold. Um, I was looking at the nutrition on this. The sweet potato is about 20 calories more uh, than the pumpkin custard was. So, there's that. Um, but they baked up, they, they, these baked up really nice. I mean, that's pretty impressive. This would make a beautiful pie. Now, compared to a pie, you're going to save probably about 200 calories per serving uh, over the custard compared to the pie. So, these are great. The calories come in at 117 calories per serving, which is a nice. A healthy treat it saves you from eating unhealthy foods you're getting your vitamins you're getting fiber you're getting healthy uh, foods here and you're not eating pie so I'm gonna go ahead and have a link to the recipe and I'll include the nutrition information but there it is sweet potato custard Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on that next one.